Hello, my name is David Dustin. I'm one of the co-creators of the Clouds 2 Max plugin. Uh, what I'd like to discuss with you today is uh, methods of rendering out point clouds um, in an easy manner that you can use uh, very quickly and, uh, and you'll get quite good results. Uh, first of all, here's our 3D Studio Max environment with uh, the example file which you will be able to download. Uh, from our website and uh, so as you can see we this is a, a city where I live uh, it's not a very big city and uh, so we have I've placed a vehicle inside of here I have animated it and you can see as we can drive around in this uh, in this scene with our animated vehicle we could look from inside or whatever we wanted to do. So uh, in order to do this what I had done was I had created I had created a plane that essentially uh, mimics the the road surface that way we could use it for uh, running the vehicle on and then also we added a material to the uh, to this plane, uh, the matte shadow material, which will allow us to render out separately uh, so we can use a compositing program such as After Effects or your program of choice to composite the vehicle into the animation. So we'll turn that layer off and so we're going to jump to a camera view and so what we've done is we've animated our camera going through this going through this scene and we we follow our vehicle uh, now it's, uh, for some applications this is going to be fine uh, people are going to be quite happy with this uh, our preference is to usually try to make things more photorealistic than that photorealistic than that and so uh, typically what we will do is we will so we have the we have the vehicle turned off now the layer with the vehicle and it's also important to uh, make sure nothing is selected otherwise you're going to get these white lines in your scene so uh, the easiest way is just to choose select none or control D now uh, so what you can do here then is rather than rendering out because rendering in point clouds are it's very computationally expensive but also you end up with because basically these are quads that are facing the camera as soon as you turn the camera those quads have to turn so you get a lot of flickering when you try to render it out so a better approach is to go to tools grab viewport and create an animated sequence file so from here you can set a custom range you can also set uh, playback speed and the percent of output so I'm just going to output to uh, 800 by 600 frames and then you can choose custom file and then when you go to create you can just choose a location so Here you can see that we have already gone through and created these. We've already gone through and created a series of uh, frames. And you can see some motion here. as you see our, our camera so we're, we're stepping through the frames so we would go through and we would render out all of those uh, all of those frames with the background so now when we want to render uh, our vehicles we have a couple of options the easiest way and we'll turn our plane back on and we'll hide our point cloud and display our vehicle. Now, uh, 
what you want to do is you want to open up your material editor and we've got the the compact method or compact editor open and so you see what we have we've created uh, this match shadow material and it's very simple uh, you just go to mental ray and then match shadow reflection material and then you add this material to your horizontal plane and what that does is it allows you to render your vehicle out, it will render it out with shadows and then you can see where uh, then you'll be able to composite this together uh, in a program such as After Effects. So if we see here so we go ahead and we want to render You see, I mean, this doesn't look right, but it is. When you check the alpha channel, you're going to have the vehicle and the shadows all in one. And the easiest, the, the reason that's the easiest method, and if we go in here and look in After Effects, so uh, I've already imported the, the layers into After Effects, and so we have, uh, if we just have, these are our background files that we, that we captured and everything looks great right and then when we want to composite in our uh, our vehicles now I've done this I've done this three ways this is the easiest method and that's where uh, the one I just showed you where you bring the vehicle in uh, and these are uh, the, the frames as they're imported so this is the avalanche with shadows and so you can see that we were able to import that and overlay it directly. Now, one of the things that I don't like about doing it this way is the shadow comes in as as very very dark, and uh, and for some people that's going to be great. They aren't going to really care about that. My preference is to have the shadows be uh, slightly less dense. So what I had done was I had rendered out the avalanche just by itself and I'll show you how to do that in a moment and then I also rendered out the shadows by themselves now the advantage to doing that rendering the shadows separately is you can go down and you can adjust their opacity so if you want them darker or lighter you can do that Okay, so we've covered how to, the, the easiest method to composite in uh, a vehicle or object with shadows into After Effects. And the simplest method is just to apply a matte shadow material to your horizontal plane or whichever surface you want to use as a shadow catcher. And then just render them out and you end up with the vehicle and the shadows underneath and then you can use that. And that's the fastest easiest method to do that. Another way to do that if you want to if you wanted to just render the vehicle it's actually quite simple uh, all you do is you hide you hide the plane and then when you render it you're only going to get the just the vehicle and you won't get the shadows underneath it. So this way you can uh, you can composite it in with the shadow separately. So this is my my preferred method. So it's very easy. You just turn off the horizontal plane. Now, if you want to, uh, if you want to render the shadows separately, uh, the easiest method. So I'm just going to select everything in this window and deselect that. Now I've just got my vehicle selected. If I go to the object properties and if I turn off the uh, visible to camera button and now when I render it I'm going to get the matte shadow plane and I'm going to get just the shadow of the vehicle. So I would render out this sequence by itself. It looks like there's nothing there but when you check the alpha channel you see that now you just have the shadows separately. 
and it doesn't take very long. It renders quite quite quickly. This is a this is only a four core machine with eight gig of RAM, and it it renders pretty quickly. We go so now if we go back into After Effects, now these things might make a little more sense. So here is just our just the the vehicle only with with no shadows. Okay, and if we turn on here here is our. Uh, Here are our shadows in this particular layer. So now as we adjust this opacity of our shadow, you see how the, the shadow darkness changes. So this is my, we only rendered out about 200 frames for this one. But this to me looks uh, more realistic and you can, you, know, you can darken it. You can even animate the darkness if you want to uh, within After Effects. So your options are render them out separately so we have just the the vehicle by itself and and if your vehicle is too dark like this obviously you can add you know more lighting in the max environment to fill in some of these obviously you, you all know how to do that so uh so our options are rendering the vehicle out by itself the shadow out by itself and then you can composite it here or you can render it out as one entity with the vehicle and the shadows. So if we turn off our background cloud, you can see how the vehicle is, just the vehicle is present. So this is going to be the fastest, easiest way. And uh, as you can see, that looks pretty good. I mean, the vehicle is, is pretty close to photorealistic and obviously we have our laser scan.